They love you. You're a dork. They're like, you're not giving us food. We don't like you. I think they only follow you if you're going towards their house. Right. They don't usually follow. They don't, you can't lead them away. You can only lead them to. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your name? It's so funny. Chrysalis Kendall. <laughs> and what do you do? I'm an occupational therapist, and I'm a pediatric specialist. Are you a maker? In a way, I would say yes. I spend most of my day um, trying to help kids learn how to make and play and do. And so I think in a way, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Was this your first maker fair? It was my first maker fair, but I did help Nick with one other uh, kite making event that was a, like a mini um, event at a hall of science as well. Um, doing something very similar. What is something that caught your attention? <laughs> well, being from New York and coming from the Pacific Northwest back to the back to New York, I was definitely like not surprised, but reminded of sort of the um, the go 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 attitude. The sort of like we have to get this done fast and get to the next thing because we don't want to miss out. Um, and it, so there was a little bit of like it felt like a time crunch mm -hmm. for a lot of the people that were visiting our booth. But at the same time, I was refreshed by the number of kids who were like, this is my favorite thing that happened today. Like, they were at this amazing fair with a bajillion things, robots that crushed cars. <laughs> and they yeah. were like, I flew a kite today. Um, I was shocked by the number of people, adults included, but mostly by, the, like, the preteens that were like, I've never flown a kite. Mm -hmm. um, because K is for kite is, like, this thing that we learn, like, in preschool. Mm-hmm. And so every kid knows what a kite is, but the idea that not like every kid has like seen a kite in real life, besides that cartoon picture of the, you know, the diamond diamond kite. kite. Yep. Um, and I guess I forgot about that. I forgot that that was like a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the Maker Fair. Like, if someone asked you what did you do last weekend, what would you say? Oh my goodness! It was like a total whirlwind. Like. We got there, and there were so many things as we are walking by. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, that robot is making cotton candy, and that one is crushing vehicles, and that one is, you know, whatever. And then there were things that were much more, you know, every day that you would see. Things mm -hmm. like the sequence that you could change the color on. There was lots of food. There was lots of, but, like, or, like, a city made of masking tape or, like, a whole, like, I don't know. I thought it was really cool, but I we were so busy that I only got to see glimpses of it, which was fine. I think I didn't have the energy, honestly, to keep going. <laughs> but um, but I think that it was really uh, a neat thing to have all of these people that are making unique and not unique things, but making them mm -hmm. and doing them maybe in a unique way, all in one space. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. And wanting to share it. And wanting to share it. Right, exactly. Like, being so thrilled about what they're doing that they're, like, excited to tell you about it. Like, even the tea-making guys were, like, they were, like, oh, let us tell you about how we do this. Let us tell you about the process. Let us tell you about the flavors. Let us tell you about why we chose these things to go together and where we're basing these ideas from and, mm -hmm. you know, how, how we organize and how we, I don't know, I just, it was neat. Uh, one of my favorite parts about Maker Fair is that it's a space that gives us license to kind of geek out over our particular thing, mm -hmm. and everybody else wants to share the thing that they geek out about. Yep. Well, and connect the thing that they geek out about to this other thing that they don't geek out about. Mm -hmm. Like, the engineering professors that were coming to the kite tent were like, mind blown. How do we teach this to, like, engineering students? Right. How, you know, and I was like, oh. But it's so simple. It's such a simple idea. It's this thing mm -hmm. that, like, of course it gets more complicated just like anything else the deeper you get into it. But um, I was amazed by how many people were like, oh, I'm, like, into this, and I'm going to draw chemistry equations on my kite, and then yeah. I'm going to, you know, just be super interested in how um, how you get into kiting, mm -hmm. and then how can I relate that to the thing that I'm super into. I don't know. I thought that was cool. Yeah.
folks often say that they feel inspired after being at a Maker Faire. So, do you feel inspired? Uh, sure. You I, feel tired. I feel exhausted. <laughs> I'm sure at some point it will kick in and I'll be like, whoa, I want to do more of this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've done other events with large groups of children especially, mm -hmm. making things or showing them things, bringing in reptiles to schools or, you know, making the same activity with a bunch of different kids, doing mm -hmm. um, group projects, that sort of thing. And so I, I already find those things ideas sort of inspiring, but I think it was, um, it definitely inspires me to do a little bit more outside of my office, a little bit more in the community. So okay. I work a lot individually, one-to-one -one with children and families. Mm -hmm. Um, and so being able to kind of share those skills in a wider arena was super fun mm -hmm. and kind of like, Ooh, I can do more of this. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> what is something you think is important when you're trying to engage someone with your particular idea or activity? I think, you know, it comes down to personality, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone is a little bit different. So for me, there's an element of letting someone come to me to be interested in it, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm already a little interested. Tell me more. Or like, oh, that looks cool. Instead of being like, come and see my thing, because it's cooler than anything else. Right. There's, a, there's an element of like letting someone come to you that I find really helpful. But I also recognize that there are people who that doesn't work for, because if they had to come to you, they never would. And then they wouldn't have an opportunity to learn something new from you. Obviously, they can learn something new by trying or by doing. But, mm -hmm. um, And so like kind of finding different ways to approach different people and making sure that not everything is cookie cutter, not everything is the same. So we're doing this project, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, we're building the same kite with every person that comes through. But the process that we go through for building it is different for every person that comes through. Some people want all the supplies and they want to figure it out. Some people want someone with them the entire time helping them make sure that they fold the tape right. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to listen to the instructions and they want to do whatever they want to do. Um, and sometimes that's okay. And sometimes it's not okay. Right. Um, <laughs> and so I think uh, coming into something with the idea that like not everyone is going to do this the same way and not everyone is going to think this is as simple or straightforward as you do. Mm -hmm. um, and allowing space for people to learn in different ways, I guess is really what it comes down to, right, is understanding what gets their goat and then helping them to learn a new skill mm -hmm. um, in a way that works for them. All right, Ross. All right, so uh, you work with children of varying skill sets. Uh, yeah. Do you think that this, being the, the kite making, is something that you could use in your practice? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um on many levels. <laughs> so I already have a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but from a standpoint of following directions, from a standpoint of organizational skills, from a standpoint of fine motor skills, visual mm -hmm. motor development, taking ownership of what you accomplished, what you've made, uh, bilateral integration, like any everything, crossing midline, visual attention, visual tracking, like kites are this thing that can do so many things and on a level that's not work. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> it's not work to watch your kite in the air because you're excited because you drew it because it has this whatever that you are watching the wind. You can see the wind that you can feel, but you can't see in mm -hmm. real life. Right. But you can see it and you can, Oh, that is so neat. And you can see what your body does when you run and create that, that air, right? Or, I mean, you're not really creating the air, but you know what I mean. Right. Um, and you get to kind of play with it, right? Mm -hmm. You can pull it in this direction or pull it in that direction and see what happens. And then it goes down on the ground and then you pick it back up and you run again. And I don't know. I think that's pretty neat. Yeah. 
So uh, you were only recently introduced to kite flying. Yes. Yet you volunteered to fly to New York to do a kite workshop (laughs) for two days. (laughs) Why? Uh, Lots of reasons. Uh, One of them because I think it's a really great idea. I think it's super Mm -hmm. fun. I think it's an opportunity to reach out to a ton of people. Mm -hmm. Um in a way that's accessible, in a way that's, um, I don't, can be used across the board. I mean, we had teachers coming in and we could say, oh, they're like, this is a great idea. This is how I can teach this. And then another teacher would come in and go, oh, this is a great idea. This is how you can teach this other thing. And I don't know, just an opportunity to, um, impact a wider, uh, population. There we go. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like it's New York. I love New York. I'm from New York. Um, that's part of it. Um, <laughs> And to to do something with you, which I like doing because you're fun, I guess. <laughs> sometimes, uh, yeah. Because you're fun sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think it was just a good opportunity to kind of see what's out there in this maker world that mm-hmm. I don't know a whole lot about, that I'm just learning of its existence, how I don't know. <laughs> um, but I really didn't know about this before. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was that was part of it, too, was like, oh. This is cool. I'm interested in learning more about this maker thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we we had all different sorts of, of kids and adults coming up to the booth um, with uh, varying skill sets, yes. uh, varying approaches, uh, and I I somewhat recall specifically that there was an autistic um, teenager that came up to the booth. Yep. Uh, when when I looked over, it seemed like just like every other kid. There was there was no difference, and and for me that's that's really awesome to see is yeah. that kites are a great equalizer. Yeah. Um, and just wondering if there's any other stories or if you share kind of that experience on that side of the table because we had <laughs> right so, so many, much <laughs> yeah. so much going on. <laughs> yeah. So actually, um, a lot of the kids that came in mm-hmm. were not typical. Mm -hmm. Um, and because of my interactions with them, I had a lot of parents say, what, what is it that you do? (laughs) And then they would say, that makes sense. That makes sense. My child is diagnosed with X, Y, Z or my family, you know? Um, so there were, there were a lot of kids there that were not quote unquote typical. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, totally were like into it and just doing their thing. And they were you know, attending to their work. And I think it was a challenging environment for a lot of kids. Um, I think being outside actually helped. It was very bright and noisy. It was was very bright and very noisy, but there was also a sense of freedom. You could walk away if you needed to. Mm -hmm. There wasn't echoing off of any surfaces. There wasn't, you know, there, and you already knew you were going to be outside. You already knew it was going to be bright. So there were sunglasses that could be worn. There were headphones that went on. There were, you know, and some of the kids said like, I don't need these right now. And that's cool. And other kids needed them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do think that there there is some of that, and the, and also just like in the other direction, right? We had people who are thought like who are experts in their field going, where do I put the tape? Yeah, you know, yeah. like <laughs> is this really gonna fly without a crossbar? Yeah, like yeah, it was it, it was, was hard know. to tell someone's education level Absolutely. or skill set level. Right. When they came up to the yep. table to build a kite, yep. unless they volunteered that information. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, yep. yeah. and some of it was seemed super intuitive to, you know, kids and was so far-fetched for some of the adults. <laughs> like, what? You, that's all you're giving me? Yeah. Um, or like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I can't believe you thought to put like six pieces of tape on a piece of contact paper like yeah you know like, <laughs> oh my goodness that's great this is oh this is a, a tablecloth material ah oh, I could do this with my kids yes yeah definitely as someone who who works with children on a, on a routine basis mm-hmm. um and uh please correct me if I say this wrong but you also work with helping children kind of do things on their own yes like uh, uh some of the the patterning and the learning of like how to feed themselves, how to take care of themselves on their own. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
And one of the things we, we always notice at, the, at workshops like this is getting parents to stop doing it for their child. Mm -hmm. And just wondering if, like, if there was anything that stood out for you in, one, trying to tell parents to stop stop doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop helping me. Yeah, but, like, if, if, if it was a natural progression for, like, children to kind of pick this up and do it for themselves. I think for most of the kids that were there, it was. And actually, at, at times, I was surprised at how little parents were intervening. Mm -hmm. So there were times where I would tell them what I needed them to do as the next step and give them the material, and the parents still were, like, <laughs> confused or not ready to help or right. not, you know, and they could see that we were four people and at times three people with <laughs> at least 15 people that we were trying to help at the same time who were in varying stages of the project. Right. And um, there were times where I was kind of surprised by the lack of intervention from the parents, which was a breath of fresh air because a lot of parents are, you know, right on them. Like, no, you got to do it. No, you're not doing it this way. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I had some parents who would just go, oh, they tied this really tight. Is that okay? And I was like, yep. It's on there. If it breaks, bring it back, you know? Yeah. Um, and then other times I had to say, like, oh, you know what? We're, we have a lot going on here. I'm going to need you to step aside if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, and we can help them as, as they get along with this project. Um, I didn't personally run into any parents that were like, I'll do what I want. Good. Uh, they all were like, oh, okay, and like st either stepped back or engaged when I asked them to, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you think you can help them with this? They, you know, they're three and don't know how to tie a knot, and I could stand here and tie the knots for them, or you could do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to say that. I yes. just would say, hey, all right, you know, I'm going to need you to help him with this one, you, you know, two double knots right here. I'm like, okay, and let me know when you're ready for the next step. Yep. Um, and it seem to work out pretty well. Um, last question is, uh, so you come to the Maker Fair, and pretty much five minutes before the Maker Fair opens, I teach you how to to build this kite. Right? Yep. And you, you went forward for two days building this kite without any assistance. I mean, all the four of us at the table were always kind of on top of each other, helping each other out and, and moving through all the steps really easy. Yeah. Uh, so as someone who literally learned the workshop <laughs> right before you did it and did perhaps the most craziest version of this workshop, uh, what are some things that you would suggest for others that want to do, that Similar. want to take this model and, and do this workshop? Um, I think... One, for us, we were really lucky because the four of us worked together like we've been working together for years. Even yeah. though we, you know, my mom pulled in from, you know, we know her. Right. But, like, and I know I can work with her, but, like, she didn't know you guys that well. And <laughs> being able to, you know, pull it off was really because we worked together so well. Because mm -hmm. um, it really could have been... Um, a much bigger challenge. Yes. Um, <laughs> having been responsible for some of the preparation work was key for me because mm -hmm. when families asked, like, oh, how did you make this? I knew the process because I had cut okay. 500 of the however many kites that we made. Mm -hmm. And we had spun up a bunch of, you know, in, in a couple of different ways, kite strings. Mm -hmm. And I was cutting the bridles right there so they could see that part. And I we had done all of the taping and all of the, the hole punching and all of the... So we knew the full process from beginning to end right. of how this worked out. Um, and that was super, super helpful. So I think if someone were going to be doing this anew, that they would want to make sure that their team came together beforehand, knew the process, knew the... Um, materials mm -hmm. and kind of had um we had some like canned phrases that I sort of felt we all used and that kind of happened just naturally. a minute <laughs> right well no but even yes. things like this is going to be your bridle you're going to tie it here and here and we're going to find the center the cent finding the center is going to help balance your kite when it's in the air right like just little like here's the just sort of short version of why we're doing this because some people were like oh the bridle we should stretch it right and tie it across and I was like well 
fly as well. Um, <laughs> but because, you know, we're like, oh, I'm just going to run this one string through and tie it back to itself and call it a day. Um, so it was something like a, um, uh, like a map step. Mm -hmm. Like, here are the materials that you're going to need for your kite. Here are the, you know, here's the steps to doing it. And, and it doesn't have to be something that they can read. It can just be visual steps. It could even be, like, a big, like, poster board behind everyone that they can kind of go, oh, oh yeah, okay. Um, just mm -hmm. to have an idea of what was coming up next. That said, there was a number of people who tried to move forward with the project on their own without the advice of one of the people that was helping and ended up having to undo the work and redo the work because mm -hmm. they had assumed incorrectly about how the kite was going to How work. it gets done. Yeah. yeah. And so having a model, I think, again, would be super helpful. Um, I think for on, on our end, if we're going to be sending things out to people who are wanting to do a workshop, right, if we're sending supplies and directions, that on our end it would be useful to have like a a more detailed version of why we do something just to have, you know, to have the underlying science behind why do you use a bridle versus just one string? Why do you, you know, only need mm -hmm. the two um, beams or why do you, you know, whatever. the Just sort of a little description that isn't necessary for maybe every participant. But it um, just gives, but you, a just gives you a better understanding of what, what and why the materials are the way they are. Okay. Um, could be useful. Um, definitely the second day making workspaces was essential to yes. functioning. Um, we were a little less busy that day, but not a whole lot less busy, right. but it actually worked to say, all right, hop behind someone and you'll get their spot when they leave. And we didn't have people come in from both directions and squeezing their, their little kite into this one corner on the table and then getting upset when they had to add the, you know, had to add the poles. And I, like, I think that that really helped mm -hmm. kind of organize and create an expectation for a flow of workspace. That was pretty essential to functioning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my, my recommendation is make sure you have your, your food and water ahead of time because right, if right. you're doing a that full day key. workshop. Like that... having, having relatives deliver your food was really key to the whole. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I ate until like 6 the first day. Yeah. We ate at like 7.30 and then I ate at 6. And I <laughs> like, I ate a hamburger in four bites. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever eaten a hamburger that fast in my life. Yeah, didn't pee, didn't eat, didn't do anything all day. No, I must for, not have been drinking enough fluids because I did not take a potty break. And then passed out. Sunscreen. The Bring yes. sunscreen. Don't forget to put sunscreen on your arms. Yes. Yeah, and uh, definitely a learning moment for me was, um, and I and I kind of know this ahead of time, but there's only so much I can do for with the Maker Fairs is... Um, they make certain assumptions because it's kites. Right. And so, like, not having that completely clear ahead of time that, no, indeed, we, we needed Some protection move, from the um, elements. And, yeah, and having them have us outside. So that's definitely something for, for me to take forward and yeah. to, is to really delineate, like, this, this is the kind of space I need to do this right. as much as they push back. Is... Yeah, and I think using, um, that was the other thing I was going to say, is using materials. Uh, so we were using a lot of different things to weigh down the kites because yeah. we didn't expect the wind. We weren't, we weren't really prepared for that. So if someone were going to be doing this, like, say, at a school event mm -hmm. and they were outside and they don't know what the weather's going to be like, um, having available to them something that isn't a material that's used for the project to use for weighing things down um, or keeping things stable because, uh, you know, using the markers that other kids wanted, then kids were upset because that person was hoarding the markers or mm -hmm. using the, um, you know, the strings that we were going to be tying later. People were like, oh, so this is the string? <laughs> or like the tape. Oh, so I just ripped the tape, right? Yeah. Um, or, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. And I, I think there was a little confusion <laughs> about why the materials were on the table if they weren't to be used. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, we, we ran out of actual weights that I could use yeah, very well, quickly. Very quickly, very quickly. And we made do. Nobody, mm -hmm. I mean, there was no one who got really upset. There was no one who yelled. There were no parents who were, you know, super aggressive. There was no, you know, and people, I think, were all together really 
pretty flexible around mm-hmm. this very busy area. Um, but I definitely think, uh, yeah, delineating like kind of what you need for a space for making a kite versus flying a kite yes. is a good thing to. Yeah, it is not kind of the make same. Clear. It is not, it is not the, the same. same. It, it's hard to make kites where outside. you fly kites. Yes. Right. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, any last any last thoughts? No, that was great. That was you want to go sleep? I'm glad that we were part of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah.